She's on one percent, by the way. Salatath is just ahead. After me. Oh, this reminds me Go. so much of I'll hold the line. Stormwind scenario. Oh, In the very heart of shadow. I will be the shield that guards the way. What? Wait, I want to learn how to do that. You got like the ages in you. I want to imagine being a tank. You could like pop your alt like that. Oh. They gave Farin ultimates. They gave her hero talents. Cool. Uh oh. What did I do? Did I break it? You mortals are the most wrathful creatures in existence. I've watched you break worlds, overthrow gods. Even the realm of death couldn't hold you. Uh. Your hunger for violence is insatiable. You lured us here, unleashed us upon the Nerubians. All to fuel the Black Blood's power. My power. This stops now. <laughs> Your determination delights me. But I have risen from the ashes of countless empires. I have survived ordeals you cannot comprehend. You cannot kill me. I'm not aiming at you. Woo! Yay! This changes nothing! <laughs> Kepgar! Yay! No, no, no. Hi, Katgar. I heard your voice. This can't be. <laughs> you did well. I knew you would stop her. Stay with me, Katgar. Katgar! Don't let go. Kat! Oh, no! Katgar! Oh, so close. Wait, go on, Anduin. Cause resurrection. No way. Is this the moment? No rest for you, old man. We'll keep you running for the next thousand years. What the? Yay! Yay! Ah, oh, that was wonderful. Oh. Wait, did he fall down again? Ketgar? Let's get to work. Ketgar, are you okay? You're just unconscious. Oh, okay, that's all right. This is me off the stream, and the cutscene shows a lot of cool things, but it also offers a whole lot of new questions, which I can't wait to see further play out. Zelotov has so far been established as an untouchable character. Illyria crawling on the ground, the ascended Nerubians under her control, instantly disarming, and yet the Dark Heart is still hit. She doesn't seem to be happy with it, it, it doesn't seem to go as planned, so I guess that she started to believe her own hype. She started to believe that she was indeed untouchable, which Illyria made use of. The Dark Heart gets hit and a massive explosion erupts. This changes nothing, which flows in line with the idea that Zalatov has a lot more cooking in the background. 
and then Katgar manages to magic his way out of the heart. Did only Katgar come out of it, or did the entire thing crack open? If so, does that mean the corruption of Galagrond that was sucked out earlier escaped as well? Or did all of that just become the one massive power storm that we see and Katgar was somehow able to maintain some form? Hard to say. Up for interpretation. Maybe the Dark Heart is just broken but still in her possession. And what about Katgar now? Was his time locked away within the Dark Heart the only thing that happened to him? Or is there now more at play? If the Harbinger can dominate Nerubians with the black blood inside of them, what can she do to someone who spent time in the Dark Heart? There was this ride at Gamescom this year, where they had us fly around Daladan, then you flew into Ashkehet, and then you flew into some cloud thingy, a place where Zalatov was where she changed her size, became massive, and she wasn't ready to take us on quite yet. Now, that event is not canon, they've said this, but... What if, in the Dark Hearts, Ketgar had to spend a whole bunch of time with Zalatov? Could she perhaps have turned Ketgar into some kind of sleeper agent? I think it'd be kind of cool, but time is going to tell. Zalatov explains that our hunger for violence is insatiable, and she lured us here to have us fight. Fuel the Black Blood's power, fuel her power as she drains Beladar. Beladar started to darken when Sargeras stabbed the world, but the exact reason wasn't given. Some wondered if Zalatov used the sword to slip in a bit of corruption, while others they got the idea that the catalyst of getting the blood of the old gods moving, that that was Sargeras stabbing the world. Again, it's not been confirmed, but Zalatov drained the crystal while monologuing about the black blood. Perhaps that is what we got in there, and the violence fueling its power. That very much reminiscent of our days on Pandaria. That land was infected with the essence of the old god Yasharaj, the negative emotions that we fueled into the land it gave rise to the Shah. The crystal itself looks very similar to the Janadar. Could this be Zalatov's, you know, interdimensional spaceship? Could this have been the thing that, that brought the Harbinger into Azeroth? And did she leave it behind for draining out this corruption? Questions, questions. Now, the Harbinger has risen from the ashes of countless empires, she says. Karesh fell after their song started to ring out, and the Locust Walker knows about Zalatov, about the Harbinger. How long has she been going around in the Warcraft universe? What ordeals has she been through? And perhaps most importantly, what is it that she wants to accomplish? The world soul so long denied me. Shall be mine. Now she might be unkillable. At the very least, a single arrow from Illyria is not going to do the job. And she has this vibe of being near untouchable, right? Yeah, we do know that at some point in time, some way, somehow, Zalatov was imprisoned within a blade. And only a bargain with the old god Nazov was able to set her free. Who had the power to contain her? How did she end up in the blade? And could we perhaps imitate that? Again, all kinds of cool stuff being built up. Can't wait to find out more, but so far I'm definitely over the moon with the start of the story of the war within. More episodes are going to come out as soon as possible, not to mention the raid that is next. But for now, here's the rest of my live reaction. I hope you'll enjoy. <gasps> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. So I wasn't spoiled entirely. That's very nice. I'm actually quite happy about that. So I was spoiled on Ketgar returning. Um, so confirming the whole idea of he got sucked into the Dark Heart. I was not spoiled on, you know, fucking resurrecting him. Ha! <laughs> I thought for a moment that they just brought back Ketgar so that he could actually properly die and be like, okay, everybody, end of your speculation. He is just dead, all right? We know that you're all speculating, no body, no death, so we'll give you a body, we'll give you a death. Don't you worry about it. I felt like, oh, oh no. And here he is. Um, cool. Keep going? All right, we'll keep going. I want to react to the cutscene first. I love, um... So, we spoke about this during the initial reaction as well with Gamescom. Uh, there was the VR experience where you could jump on a mount. And you would fly around Daladon and whatnot, and then you would fly in Ashkahet, and then you would fly into the Dark Heart. And the Dark Heart is super interesting because it's supposedly a trinket created by Nelfarian, then taken by Iridacron and empowered, and it started like sucking out all the magics. And so, 
in that VR experience, you end up in a different realm and you end up in, in, in front of Zalatov, which is like massive and huge. She makes mention of, I survived ashes of other empires before. You don't know what ordeals I went through. So, what if Zalatov is not even aligned to the void? What if Zalatov is just Zalatov? That would be interesting. She seems very connected to the Void, but what if she's something else entirely? We don't know what Zalatov is. That's the fun part. Like, she shoved in our faces like, ooh, look at mommy Zalatov. Um, but we don't know. Also, that hunter makes me incredibly jealous as they're running around with the Mudskipper as a pat. Um, so that's cool. Survive more. Unleashed like the power of the Dark Hearts. We're not aiming at you, so Illyria is definitely a lot more clearer of mind than she was in Ashkahet. I know a lot of people were like, Oh my god, Illyria, stop being so dumb and shooting at Zalatov, you're not gonna win. But it's a matter of, you know, whispers in your heads and vengeance for Ketgar. Now she's much more clear and like, okay, I, I won't try to aim at Zalatov, I'll train at the Dark Heart. And Zalatov still believes it changed nothing. So what was Zalatov trying to do? Sucking out the darkness out of uh, the, the crystal, Belladar. The dark blood being empowered by our rage and fury. Reminds me a lot of the Shah, to be honest. So when Yashiraj was pulled out of the world, there were like bits and pieces that fell back, and I assume his blood as well. And those emotions that we brought to Pandaria gave rise to the Shah, ain't it? Similar vein that we now feed in the black blood. Interesting. All right. Continuing on, Halfie. Just for you, baby. Mwah. I will help anyone in need. Oh, you will? Oh, yeah. And of course, Anduin reconnects to the light in the most pivotal moment. Underneath the light of Belladar. From darkness into light. He's been walking his steps. He's been trying to overcome the difficulties of the Shadowlands. The traumas that he went through. And not only does he reconnect to the light. Seemingly... And I think 99% certain he does a resurrection. And you might say, oh, what a big deal. I just press my spells whenever my raid wipes and you resurrect them. Resurrection in the lore is not the same as it happens in game. Uh, resurrection in the lore is extremely rare because otherwise people just keep coming back. So we got like stuff like Death Knights or the Forsaken, but that's necromancy. We got stuff like Kalia, but it's also light fused necromancy. The only one that I know of in the lore... Now, I don't want to say anything crazy. So, we got an Aquin that brought back a Medivh, but that seemed to be time-limited. If not time-limited, you know, to be decided. Enduin has done it once before with his daddy. Not like that. He called upon the light to bring back Varian, which seemingly seemed to be a resurrection. Then, people fought uh, during Battle for Azeroth in the introductionary cutscene, where, like, all the soldiers on the ground, the people were like, oh, Enduin does, like, a mass res. But they've confirmed in the Chronicles that it was a big old heal, not a mass res. And now he done diddly do it again. And Kedgar comes back with a big old smile on his face and like, thank you, Anduin. I was nearly stuck with Sylvanas in the maw. Thank you, buddy. What did Kedgar see in there? What did Kedgar do? Is it even actually Kedgar or are we once again following in line with Zalata's plans? Mm, what happened to you, Kedgar? Did she step on you? Let's find uh, out. Ah, so goodbye, Guardian. I mean... Kedgar Sleeper Agent would very much fall in line with um, my Batman analysis, ain't it? That'd be kind of cool. And does Zalatov, does the, Zalatov calls it her blood. Does that mean she's the fifth old god? Again, uh, I can't say much about the fifth old god thing. I think that if you're going to put in a line in which Illyria says she's not an old god, she's something else. Um, I think at that point, as a developer, you are putting something down for the people to walk away with. Which is, she's not an old god, she's something bigger and better. Um, does that mean that it's impossible for the fifth old god to be a thing? No. Uh, so I, I won't shoot anything down, but at the same time, if that's how they're doing storytelling, would that be enjoyable? Would you like it if you have NPCs that literally tell you that she is not something, and then it turns out that she is? Would you enjoy that kind of storytelling? Personally, I wouldn't. Uh, but everybody will have their own opinion on it. For me personally, I hope Zalatov is something much bigger and grander than uh, the Old Gods. Perhaps the source behind the Old Gods, perhaps the Void Lords, perhaps a Silver Surfer, perhaps something else. Um, I think that we've done the Old Gods storyline. I'm ready, I've been ready for quite a while to just let go of the Old Gods. Give me something better, give me something bigger. I want it to be better. Uh, yet at the same time, different does not always mean bad, right? Ah, oh, he has a magical wheelchair! 
It's not just a wheelchair, it's magical! Ah! He has a magical wheel. So, sorry. Uh, this wheelchair was datamined a couple of months ago. <laughs> I needed you to see this. Um, this wheelchair was, was datamined a couple of months ago with, like, the name Catgar connected to it. Um, at the same time, we also have a character which is called Drekfar, um, the shaman, who is also in a wheelchair. So, you know, Catgar has a magical one. Um, Catgar's chilling. So, yeah, but, like, uh, to finish the point that I'm trying to make... Um, I understand that people are like, this is different than what they normally do. And you can see this from the introduction area cutscene, and Blizzard acknowledges this as well. Like, if you look at the cutscene with Syllabus, it's very emotional, it's very dialogue heavy. Compared it to a uh, Wars of Draenor, we will never be slaves, but we will kick the shit out of a manor off. It, compared it to Battle for Azeroth, where Horde and Alliance are kicking each other on the battlefield. Even the Dragonflight one had us cruising around, running away from Razagev, right? So, yes, it is different, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Personally, I do like to see a bit of a balance. Um, I felt that in Dragonflight, the balance was far too skewed to the emotional talks where you end up with things like, oh, you become together as a family, where I'm missing moments like the burning hotel to the seal where I'm going like, what the f*** just happened? In the War of In so far, I think Dalaran's destruction and Khadgar's sucky sucky into the Dark Heart was a wonderful way of starting things off. That is like, oh shit, the stakes are high, Zalatov can be anywhere. Um, but that's also where I'm like, mm, is this not a really big, uh, little bit quick? But who is to say what's going to come into the future? Who is to say what actually happens to Khadgar? We spoke about this during uh, the introductionary cutscene where we speculated about the fate of him. I've made the comparison to when Joker kidnapped Robin and turned him into a mini Joker. Zolotov could have done some serious f***ed up shit to Khadgar. Things that Khadgar himself doesn't even realize until they come to the surface. Sleeper agent, exactly. Uh, that is what I would like to see. That is very much what I would like to see. Um... But we're going to find out, right? Must <laughs> be able to fold cat cut up really small to fit him in your dark heart. Uh-huh. So with you. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And in a parallel to Hearthstone, where uh, Catgar's ability is to, like, give you random cards or whatnot, I dreamed about, not literally, but I imagined a raid encounter where Catgar just loses his mind. He starts giggling and cackling in the background. And it just starts to ro throw out random fireballs and orbs of wisdom and... Our enemy and our team gets hit by it. Ketgar doesn't know friend from foe. Um, I would love for that to happen. But we're going to find out. So the shooting of the heart. Like we, we've we seen Zalatov established as this character that, you know, Illyria can't touch. If Zalatov wished it, Illyria would be crawling on the ground. So it's a matter of overconfidence becoming a hubris. And Illyria doing a little whoopsie. I'm not actually aiming for you. I'm aiming for the dark heart. Now... You could argue like, oh my god, what kind of a dumbass villain would, you know, let the dark heart be hit? You're not wrong. But at the same time, we wanted this moment to be created, right? Now, when it comes to, like, Charlie, we were talking about the whole, you know, sleeper agent Ketgar. As he does seem to be appearing to take a nap right now. Are you taking a nap? No, you just got your eyes open. Um, Ketgar seemingly dies. So, if he dies, how, how was Zalatov supposed to, you know... How was Zalatov supposed to use him as a sleeper agent if he fucking dies? Hey, preach! Did you notice in your confrontation between Zalatov and Illyria, Zalatov moves the dark heart after Illyria fires a void shot, but Illyria still hits it? Yeah, but like magic, ain't it? Magic. Is the staff anywhere? Nah, it's in bits and pieces. It builds trust that she does that. Oh, she knew that he'd be rest. Oh. Oh, I see. It's all part of the master plan. <laughs> um, now, I like the idea of Sleeper Agent Ketgar. I don't know if it has a lot of merit, but it's, it's you know, it's it, I really like the idea of Ketgar at some point being activated. Like, ooh. At the same time, maybe she didn't plan on it, but it just works in her advantage. She's like, you've been part of my dark heart. Like, if she can take control over the Black Blood Nerubians, then surely a Ketgar that's been in a little domain, you know, could have happened as well. Um, where is this what you mean? Is resing art lore wise? Yes, resing is extremely rare. Enderman has done it twice now. Enderman is a fucking badass in the light. Why didn't she just absorb the arrow if it's a magical arrow? Because there's also an actual arrow in there. Like, it's a guiding tracked arrow. <laughs> uh, this is Dornagal. This is uh, the capital. 
I don't think Zalatov wanted Ketkart to die. She tortured him close to death. And him landing from the Dark Heart was the last part of damage to cause the death. Uh, but then, again, that would, that would... It doesn't seem like Zalatov wants the Dark Heart to be destroyed. And while she yells out, this change is nothing, she doesn't seem to be exactly happy with the Dark Heart being gone. He could have just been very close to death. We don't know if that was a res. Um... It's not outright stated in text that Ketkar dies, but his hand goes on the floor, final breath, Illyria holds him in his arms. Um, I'm gonna give that a 99% chance that Endwing gave him a full-on res. Because if that was just a heal, then I want to bring out the first aid kit to bring him back. Like, that hand on the floor is a total visual cue of, yeah, they're dead, right? He didn't shit himself. Oh, right, okay. Right, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Stay a while and listen. Uh... It occurs to me that I never got the chance to properly thank you, champion. You're Were welcome, it not Ketka. for your efforts, Dalaran could have proven to be an even greater tragedy than it was. We well, ignore the part where I get around with the defenses, yeah? How did you survive? The Dark Heart was created not to destroy, but to capture and harness all manner of power. When I felt what it was doing to me, I transmuted myself into pure arcane energy. You did and what? allowed yourself to be trapped within the Dark Heart. You can do that? Yes. Until you freed me. Can everyone do that? That was a risky move. Trusting me to finish the fight against Zalatath. I knew you would do whatever it took to defeat her. Just like all those years ago. When we charged through the dark portal and closed it behind us to save our world. Both then and now, placing my faith in you was never any risk at all. That transmutation spell, however, <laughs> that was not without consequences. You know, Cairdrin keeps saying I should just ride a griffin around. That seems terribly inconvenient, if you ask me. I much prefer this chair. Oh. Could that be because Archmage Modera designed it for you herself? Oh! Why, Alaria? Oh! Whatever are you implying? Is it time? <laughs> Only that you and Terralian are so very alike. Bold in battle, shy in matters of the heart. <laughs> And you are still the same old Deleria, I see. That I am, Kadka. Void or no void. It's a callback to the cutscene where he was like, Oh, I'm sorry for dropping that. Ah. So, Modera, there's, there's been a thing between Ketgar and Modera. Modera is one of the other members of the council. You probably don't know her because she doesn't have a, a massive role to play, but she shows up from time to time. I think she was, like, the one who allowed Aethys back into Dalaran with, like, Legion and whatnot. Um, but there's been a thing between Ketgar and Modera forever, and they just never go with it. And it's like, she made him a chair. And I think there was, like, a Legion world quest where it was mo mainly pushed forward with Ketgar and Modera. But the part about Ketgar and relationships is that we know that Ketgar got like his youth sucked out of him by Medivh, right? So imagine being a young man in an old man's body and you see people around you fall in love and all that. I believe it was Beyond the Dark Portal in which that frustrating part actually came forward into the storyline between him, Lyria, and Trellian, where he's like, Hey! Stop fighting, you two, and just love each other! Look at me, I'm an old man, I can't even get laid! And you're all just fighting with each other! Um... So it's, n it's nice to see, like, the callback to Modera. And the cutscene that I'm talking about is the one where he sends out Illyria to go hunt the Dark Heart. And he makes the call. Uh, he says, like, Oh, good old Illyria. Void or no void. And her face, like, drops. And he's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Sora Katgar's alive. He is here. Although the transmutation spell definitely did some numbers on him. We will defend Azeroth together. So, I like the Yerstola comparison, by the way. He could just turn himself into magic and be sucked into the Dark Heart. Ha. Guess we all get hero talents, ain't it, Ketgar? If that's really your name. <laughs> ah, good to see 